Let's unbox this vintage collection Army Builder 4 pack of Captain Enoch and Thrawn's Night Troopers. Villa Verakino. If it's Star Wars, we collect it. Hello there, thanks for visiting Villa Verakino. I'm really excited. This vintage collection of four pack just arrived from Amazon Australia this morning. So these four packs do not show up at retail here in New Zealand. They are really, really hard to find. So when this one was announced, I thought, no, I have to pre-order this one from Amazon. I am not missing out on this one. Usually these four packs are just sort of multi-packs of standard figures like stormtroopers, death troopers, figures that I already do own. But as you can see, See, this particular four pack includes a named character, Captain Enoch, that is not available on a standard vintage collection backing card. So I really didn't want to miss out on Captain Enoch. I think he's really cool and unique. So I made sure to pick this one up. Really sad it wasn't available locally here in New Zealand. It was a little bit of an anxious wait waiting for this one to arrive in the mail. It did arrive early, which is always exciting. So it's definitely time to crack in and open this one up because as you can see, we've got no window here. I still don't know what these figures look like inside so thank you so much for hanging out with me today coming up really soon we'll open this one up take a closer look at all of the figures inside but first let's take one last look at the packaging as this is my first vintage collection of four pack I'm really quite surprised at how small this box is I know there's only four figures inside the picture on the front is a little bit misleading there are only four figures inside we've got a lot more pictured here on the front but I was kind of expecting something a bit bigger it's not even that big not even as wide as a standard backing card which I was kind of a bit surprised by but I really do like the artwork on the front we've got the Star Wars logo we've got the nameplate here Captain Enoch and Thrawn's Night Troopers and we have a little bit of an assorted picture here of the different troopers so if I quickly spin it around here we have a much more accurate representation of the figures inside we can see we have Captain Enoch and three troopers so I think the viewpoint here is that you can kind of mix and match a little bit if you really want to create as many troopers as pictured here. We seem to have three main variants, a white stormtrooper helmet, a gray stormtrooper helmet, and one that has a mix of the two, white and gray. We can see that this one it doesn't have quite as many red wrappings on the chest. This one has a lot, and this one has a little bit on the chest, but a lot on the arms as well. So if you are good at customizing or just very brave and about pulling your figures apart you can kind of create new ones by mixing the arms the helmets and that sort of thing to create some variations but for me I will be keeping the figures as they appear here I think it's kind of interesting that the front image is just a little bit misleading like that of course if we bought two boxes we would end up with two Captain Enochs which isn't the most helpful and again I think it's kind of sad that Captain Enoch doesn't get his very own vintage collection card back I think these boxes are fun for people that like to build loose action figure displays and dioramas less fun if you are a mint on card collector because this main character will be missing from your backing card lineup and I think that's a shame I think this one would have done so much better if we had had Captain Enoch and one night trooper so that we had them as backing cards so that you could add them to your collection and then for people that want to create a whole scene we could have a box of four different night troopers to army build because that was the original concept for these boxes Hasbro has kind of realized that if you go and put a character in here like the Tuscan chieftain alongside Tuscans it does mean that more people are kind of backed into the corner about adding this to their collection I'm not really sure whether this is going to really scratch that itch for people that like to keep their collectibles boxed or carded because there's no window here we can't see it it's it's kind of you know Schrodinger's cat the figures inside you can't even really see if you're keeping them boxed I think that's a shame I do like the colors here but I think this one would have been cooler if it was a carded one or even one of those multi-packs we have four carded figures kind of in a larger exterior box kind of housing them all together you still have to purchase them together but you can take them out and you still got them on unique backing cards I think that one would have been fun I know this keeps the cost down for us here in New Zealand these are expensive 
they end up being much more than a standard carded figure each because we have to pay international shipping and tax to import them so generally that's why I have never chased them down in the past this one because of Captain Enoch I was not going to miss out so on the top here we've got just that one line art image of a night trooper I think this is really quite cool art we've got the vintage collection logo there the sides are generally just sort of the standard copyright stuff that we would generally see on the back of a backing card there as well the main attraction of this is of course the art on the front and the back there of course we've got the standard 4 plus the warning and of course the Hasbro logo all in all I think it's kind of cool definitely not the same as having backing cards I like to keep my backing cards even though I open up my figures and I'm kind of missing the fact that I don't have a Captain Enoch backing card for my collection I know that's kind of like a little bit of a silly thing because of course the main viewpoint is of course the action figures inside which I am very excited to get into but I just think that that is a little bit of a shame especially if you like to keep a complete record of your vintage collection figures you know adding up all of those VC numbers and having them displayed it is a little bit of a shame that Captain Enoch will not be present in the Ahsoka series line for the vintage collection but anyway let's get stuck in and open these up to open this box up we've just got this one stripe here of sellotape which I'm just going to carefully snip even though this isn't a backing card I still want to keep the box there we go and we're going to be able to open it with lifting the flap here oh there's actually more space in here as well of course so I can see that we've got this sort of tray holding all four figures standing upright you can see there and we've got the little just informational booklet there and we can see all of the figures inside okay so let's move this little insert tray out and then we've got all figures wrapped up in paper little envelopes here so I'm just going to get them all out we pop that box there to the side and those cardboard inserts there so I'm just going to go through and open up each one and then we'll go over all of the details and I can see that I have picked up Captain Enoch first okay we've also got the weapons in there oh these aren't even sealed I thought they'd be like some of those black series um, accessory envelopes where you kind of have to rip them open he was just in there okay so pop that off to the side so now we have Captain Enoch they always need just a little bit of adjusting when they've been packaged in these sort of windowless boxes because they're not sort of posed perfectly but he looks really cool and we have his unique gun that has that sort of dark gray and a gold coloring that looks pretty cool okay let's pick up the next one I like that it's kind of folded so the weapon is next to the trooper it's not right up next to it okay there we go <laughs> something about the way that these figures come out they already look zombified because they're kind of leaning the helmets are kind of they already look like they're sort of stumbling around that's kind of fun and he has a gray E11 there as well it's not as black as the sort of standard E11 there certainly not to my recollection you can see it's just kind of the way the bags are folded you can nicely see that but I am kind of surprised these bags aren't sealed I, I don't know if other army builder boxes are the same because this is my first one okay he's quite twisted we've got his ankles up and his helmet twisted to the side I really like this dark gray and gold wow this is just absolutely fantastic such a shame that we're not going to see these on backing cards they just look fantastic honestly they could have given us considering all of the different mandalorians we're getting you know fleet commander judge i kind of expected that we'd just get a bunch of these on backing cards you know there we go okay our fourth and final trooper he's again leaning off to the side they just look like zombies don't they with their sort of tilted armor and the way that their feet are sort of bent in slightly unnatural ways it's definitely I'm really hoping that these are gonna sort of straighten out a little bit so we can get them to stand nicely okay let's clear out all of this packaging and take a closer look at the figures now I have all four figures out of their packaging I tweaked all of their limbs and feet to get them a little bit straighter so they can stand up 
up. Now it's time to go through all of the details and the articulation and we've even got a couple of accessories here as well. So of course I'm going to start with Captain Enoch. He is the most unique figure. We've got some really cool sculpted pieces here. Of course we can see the night troopers share a lot of similarities with an iconic stormtrooper but we also have a lot of differences as well so very keen to go through each of those individually as well but of course this one is just absolutely fantastic. I love the gold paint on this one. Of course we could see the yellow gold on the box but it wasn't a metallic finish so there was something that just kind of read as yellow. When I got these figures out of course it was the gold elements that just absolutely caught my eye straight away. So of course we have Captain Enoch's very unique Stormtrooper helmet. Absolutely love this one. It was so sort of eerie and unique and cool and just so many things all mixed in at once. So of course we've got this kind of a face plate going on here with the gold. We've got black eyes painted and then of course we've got these sort of slightly different cheek sections here, much more angled, kind of gives it a bit of a sort of a menacing and then of course we've still got that black um, sort of a chin stormtrooper helmet detail there in the front as well. I really like the gold finish here. We've got two red imperial symbols printed on the front of the helmet as well. Really nice detail there. I am so impressed with the fine detail that we can get with digital printing these days. There's no way we'd get painting like this you know 10 20 years ago. Absolutely fantastic. So there is a lot of gold on the front of this helmet. The back does look a little bit more plain We've just kind of got this big dark grey sort of weathering bit going on here. We've got sort of standard stormtrooper grey detailing here at the back of the helmet. Of course Hasbro can't add in a detail that doesn't really exist. So of course if Enoch doesn't have a lot of gold on the back of his helmet then Hasbro is not going to put that as well. I think I'm definitely going to see if there's any screenshots that show the back of his helmet because it does look a little bit plain here. But that face, oh the gold the detailing, the grey here, the sort of the crack lines of course just fantastic, absolutely looks cool. Moving down we've got a pretty standard Stormtrooper chest plate here with some gold sort of running through the cracks there. Of course they aren't sculpted cracks, it is just a painted effect. Again pretty standard Stormtrooper shoulders and bicep armor with gold and grey paintwork as well. We've got grey predominantly on the biceps, I don't think there's any gold on these biceps, I don't see gold but we've got gold on the shoulder pieces as well. Moving down the arm we've got kind of red and white going on here for the undersuit. I don't know if this is supposed to be white here. I think, I think because that's ribbed I think that might be supposed to be the sort of dark red maroon color of the undersuit. That little white bit there is actually ribbed. I think that's supposed to be the same color because I don't think we would have white on the undersuit as a weathering accent color. But we've got standard Stormtrooper forearms in white with some gold accenting on both sides. This one's a little bit more minimal. If I sort of rotate the arm around you can kind of see it there on the top surface. And then we've got that same undersuit color for the gloves. We have a gold hand plate there and a white one on this side. So just do a little bit of articulation there to move his arms up out of the way. We've got a completely gold ab plate on both the front and the back. Really nice. I really like the gold finish here. It's just so shiny. Absolutely fantastic. And of course we've got that nice torso articulation. He doesn't sort of fling a back. I always really like that. He holds his position and we can really see that. These stormtroopers, generally I like stormtroopers standing very still because of the nature of these stormtroopers. I think that really allows us to do some really interesting posing. So I'm really hopeful that we're going to have some really good articulation on these figures. I know they will probably be very similar to a standard Stormtrooper figure. I have the recent A&H reissue of VC231 on hand to do some comparisons very shortly as well. So of course Enoch's got this big plastic sort of sash skirt section here which I think is going to limit the posing that we can do around his hip area. There doesn't seem to be a major split apart from this one here in the back but that doesn't really 
really help us a lot here on the front. We've got a little bit of a cut in here, but it still covers the top of the hip area as well. I do really like the sculpting here. We've got something I really like about Hasbro is the way that they do fabric textures and differences. We can see this one has a bit more of a grained leathery appearance. Then we've got quilting here. We've got black for the holster and belts there as well. Of course, I'm going to test to see if we can fit his included blaster. It is completely sculpted on to that lower skirt section. It's not separate. We do have it hollow, so sometimes that helps. Gives us a little bit of a squishy nature there. I can kind of lift this up, but I do I do worry about causing a split at the top of these sort of plastic skirts. I know we've got a bit of a curve there, which does help it. It's not a complete pointed edge, but I don't want to stress that point there. The rubber has a bit of give, but it's not, it's not really soft. There is actually a fair sort of thickness to it. You can sort of see how thick this plastic is. So we've got a little bit of flex, but I don't think we're going to get quite the same kind of posing that we're going to be able to with the other figures there. Lifting it up a little bit, we can see that we have standard Stormtrooper thigh plates, which are, of course, asymmetrical. We've kind of got that ridged one here on the right. We've got dark gray and some gold painted details. This one has gold and standard Stormtrooper calf armor, which again, asymmetrical. We've got the knee plate on the left here. We've got some gray down the bottom and gold lines. I absolutely love the gold lines on this. They just stand out so well. And we don't have any unique, sorry, a bit of fluff, any unique painting here on the boots other than the black soles. We do have pegs here. I'm hoping that they will fit on the summer display stands because I found them just to be a little bit wobbly because of course they weren't particularly straight in those packaging. It definitely did take a little bit of time playing with the articulation of the feet and the legs to get them to try and stand up straight. So let's do a quick rundown of his articulation. I'm expecting pretty standard stuff. Underneath I can see that there is no head sculpt under here. This is a helmet attached but of course it will have that standard sort of ball attachment because if you want to customize an army build and sort of swap and mix and match we can pop these helmets off and put them on other figures. I just really like how much this can move around in this torso but we've got some very good movement here on the helmet as well. I'm actually surprised with how sort of far I can tip him down in the front. I thought that sort of extended uh, faceplate there might hit more than it does but I can still get quite a lot of movement there so let's test out his shoulders. I am a little bit worried about this particular shoulder because it is gold and it just looks absolutely brilliant. I know there is a certain amount of weathering on these figures so if you scratch it it will kind of blend in there but it is just such a complete brilliant gold surface. I don't really want to risk scratching it too much. It does on my figure hit at this point and I don't really want to stress that any further to see if I can get that to a complete straight outward angle. It completely hits there. And because of that gold surface, I don't want to scratch it because it looks absolutely amazing. We can test it a little bit more on this side because we've got predominantly white on that top peak there. The gold is lowered down. So on this side, oh, that's also not getting completely all the way up. It's really hitting a resistance point there um, where that shoulder bell is hitting in there. So if I straighten them up, you can see it's not going all the way dead straight um, up there. But of course, if I sort of, you know, play around and rotate it, we can get full sort of up with the arms there like we would expect. Let's check out some of these elbow movements as well. If I can put his arms back in the right way. Okay, so let's let's bend his elbows there because of course these troopers come with uh, E11s and he comes with a unique rifle uh, that we'll want to uh, perhaps test out some two-handed rifle poses, particularly like stormtroopers holding their blasters with those two hands. This elbow is just a there we go, getting that a little bit tighter in. So yeah, I'm hoping that we can get in a pretty good sort of two-handed pose like that to get a blaster in there but yes as expected hands move all the way that we sort of expect we've got a little bit of that sort of articulation and of course the rotation so let's test out the legs because i'm not sure we're going to get much at the hips at all that feels like that's giving me a lot of resistance at that point 
which is not really <laughs> much at all and if I try and sort of flex those at the front that's I can't sort of get it to stick it's hitting that skirt and it's pushing back all the way there so I'm not really going to get much there I'm just going to see if I can rotate it much because it's hard to grasp I can twist it just a little bit but because the skirt is so tight it's hard to grasp his thigh to get to that rotation and it's actually kind of hurting my finger there a little bit grabbing onto that so the best posing I'm going to get is with the lower legs on this one I can rotate the knees and the skirt comes down just below the knees here so I think that's possibly going to impact us a little bit if I can kind of lift that one out of the way goes to about there and I can point the toe so I can get reasonable sort of articulation there with the lower legs but yes he's not going to be quite as sort of a, uh, a posed in sort of a uh, zombie like manner as the other troopers because of this skirt it is too detailed I think that did make the better choice doing this in plastic rather than a soft goods fabric because there is just so much detail going on here I think it would be hard to translate that in fabric I just I love the textures that Hasbro gets on their sort of their leather uh, sort of components that they sculpt in plastic I really do like the texture and we've even got sort of a little bit of draping there at the top giving it a look like it is sort of a draped fabric very nice okay let's take a quick look at his blaster I really like the dark gray that we've got here I was thinking maybe it would be black because I often think of stormtrooper rifles as being black but it is a gray it is kind of a little bit darker than the gray used on his armor if I hold it to there just a little bit darker than the gray from his armor but it kind of does match very well with the overall gray of the troopers in that and we've got some fun gold details there as well I really like the little scope here at the end the gold detailing appears to be symmetrical on both sides and we've got a completely closed in trigger guard here I'm hoping he will hold this feel easily it's, it's not going to be a wrestling match but yes let's just do a quick check in his holster I'm hoping that it all just fits in oh very nice I like that so the tip does extend beyond the bottom of the holster but the scope sits outside I like the fact that we can see some of the gold detailing while it is holstered there as well looks really nice in the holster and I'm hoping that because we've got some extended pieces we can grip onto those and pull it out nice and easy so let's see how hard it is to get it in his hand with he's got a very extended trigger finger so I'm hoping that's really going to help us get this into his hand nice okay that just went straight in oh I like it when it's not a wrestling match with my figures I've not snapped fingers off my vintage collection figures but I always do worry that you know today is going to be the day it does fit in there nicely you can see how well he grips that that finger went in there very well now that I've kind of got it into his hand I don't really know that I'm necessarily going to try and get this into a two-handed pose you might be able to grip it here but it actually just looks kind of cool just like that I might play around with a little bit of posing later because I really do like just that pose there it looks really cool cool okay really happy with Enoch still think he deserved his own backing card but so so happy that we have him in the vintage collection line there are you know it's kind of strange sometimes with Hasbro with some of the main characters that we're still waiting for in the 3.75 inch figure line you know uh, my, uh, for me personally that would include a lot of characters from the Bad Batch um, but then sometimes you're just really happy that they have done figures like Captain Enoch because oh there's just something about the gold and the design and the color palette for these figures that were just so iconic the moment they appeared on screen these figures are a little bit tricky to stand up you know my figure in particular of Enoch really wants to just fall over all the time so I'm probably just going to lie him down here for a minute so that we can take a closer look at our stormtroopers so this one kind of feels the most closest to a standard stormtrooper because he's kind of got the all over white he doesn't have any gray and we've got just a few of the wrappings here so I think he'll be the best candidate 
to compare with a standard Stormtrooper. So this is VC231. This is the 2024 reissue on the A New Hope card back that came out just recently. Absolutely love this one. And you can see that the weights are very different. I like the aged weight of this one, particularly with the gold. It kind of makes me think of porcelain weight. You know, porcelain isn't often like a stark bright white. It has a bit more of a cream color to it. And I think that that's just fun because these are aged, they are repaired, you know, they're not a shiny, shiny new stormtroopers. We can see a few other paint differences. We don't have grey for the thermal detonator on the back. This one is unpainted. We don't have the blue tube stripes. There is a lot of the sort of standard stormtrooper helmet details that are missing from this one. We've still got the ear caps, the detail at the back, but something about the face just feels, you know, less defined. I believe these are the same sculpt, but there's something about the painting of the sort of mouth grill that just looks a little less defined. And I think that's just down to the paint. I feel like, I don't know, I'll have to do some really close up uh, sort of studying here. I feel, I don't know if this is the same sculpt, to be honest. There's something a little bit more askew about those ear cups. It's definitely going to be an interesting one for collectors, because it's hard to tell sometimes if yours is just a little bit different, you got something that's just a little bit of a, you know, a misprint, a little bit of extra plastic, or whether it's a true, actual different sculpt. The uh, lenses on these troopers are black, whereas the most recent issue has that more accurate for A New Hope dark green color there for the lenses as well. I think it's mainly the blue tube stripes that are missing off this one. I think that I really do like the fact that that color isn't there. I like the fact that this is a little bit more of a all over cohesive color matching. We do have the same sculpting sort of in terms of the undersuit. This one has the black ribbed undersuit, which is of course not completely accurate to the original trilogy. The ribbed undersuit is a bit more of an upgrade in terms of the detailing that was introduced in sort of the Rogue One era, where they kind of made, you know, the stormtroopers just a little bit more detailed. And of course we don't have painted ab buttons. We can see this one has the grey and blue ab buttons of the original trilogy. We don't have any amp buttons there. Those seem to be the major paint differences between these trooper figures. Um, this one does not have a holster, whereas this one does, so the belt is different in the back there as well. Overall, yep, the belt is different. We can see that by the drop boxes over the top of the thigh. This one has very small drop boxes compared to the wider ones of the A New Hope Trooper. But I was expecting Hasbro to pretty much reuse the sculpting of Stormtroopers, but I was, to be honest, I'm actually quite impressed with how much we have of the uh, red sort of wrappings that are completely raised. I thought maybe, because the artwork is a little bit hard, I thought maybe they would be like, like plastic that's kind of sitting over the top and you'd be able to move it a little bit. But I'm actually kind of impressed that it is all sculpted. It's not glued on. It is part of the sculpt in a raised manner, which I really do like. I thought maybe they would give us a Stormtrooper with all of these kind of wrappings, uh, like plastic strands around it. I really like the fact that they are completely flat uh, as a sculpting. But yeah, interesting color differences here. And it's going to be fun to take some really still close-up photos. The, so the belt is different. The rest of it is definitely going to come down to that really sort of fine eye. I think the chest is the same. And the shoulder pieces. A little less defined here on the back of the hand. The paint on this one is a little bit thick. So we don't get quite the sort of the, uh, the design detail where we've got that sort of T shape on the back of the hand armor there. It's a little bit lost under the paint on this particular figure. But then again, I, I kind of like the just the aged paint on this one. It just looks so cool. I, I just love the stark difference between these cool. It just looks so cool. I just, oh, it's really fun seeing these two side by side. We can see the, the classic Stormtrooper back plate on this one. Is that a little bit shallower or is it just my eyes? <laughs> it's going to be really interesting to kind of, there's something about it that just looks a little flatter on this one. And I don't know if it's just the color playing with my perception of size and difference. It's definitely going to be one of those things where we're going to be studying the differences. 
Uh, I know it doesn't really matter, you know, these are stormtroopers that have been sort of lost. Um, their armor is tweaked and broken and repaired. <laughs> they don't need to be exactly the same. Just a, just a note of interest for collectors, you know, which pieces have Hasbro reused, which might be new, because it gives us just a little bit of an insight as to whether we might see, you know, other Stormtrooper variants using sculpted pieces, because we know these models now exist. Ah, oh, fantastic. Okay, let's pop the regular one aside. So, of course, these ones should have standard articulation for a stormtrooper. We have got some additional sculpting here on the shoulder, which may or may not impact our ability to raise the arm completely up because this is now thicker. So if I just a little bit in terms of his head's a little bit wobbly there. You can see that thicker arm means that I'm not able to raise this arm quite as straight as this one, which is kind of what I would expect. But yes, on the shoulder bells that don't have that additional sculpting, we can still get them up to the height that I would expect. Pretty standard with the helmet here. And let's just check out very quickly the rest of the articulation because this is going to be pretty standard for a stormtrooper. There are going to be some elements. Which way do you want to bend your arm? There we go. Of course, we've got the sculpted elements on the forearm and on the chest. This chest straps stop here at the sides. And we've got, if I can move his arms out of the way, we've got some on the torso. He can lean back quite a bit on this one. And it does, I don't know if it's necessarily hitting there or if just the articulation wants to stop at this point. But I do like how it's framed on the chest plate there. I think it would have been interesting for Hasbro to just go through and decide which particular sort of strappings of the background stormtroopers that they were going to choose. We don't have any additional sculpting on this one's thighs, so we should have very sort of expected articulation with the legs, particularly if we rotate that high point just past the hip so it's more out to the side, we can get some and of course we can also rotate it. And you can see we also have that top articulation where we can swivel things out to the side. This one is a little bit uh, free at the hips, so he just wants to move at the hips, but then I can also rotate at the top of the thigh there as well. So let's just check out the articulation here. As expected, we can get a pretty good angle there because yes, I am going to want some really interesting kind of kind of staggering stormtrooper poses. Oh, I read the original A Death Troopers kind of a zombie Star Wars book when it came out and oh, it's kind of funny that all of these years later we finally sort of have stormtrooper zombies. Slightly different, you know, it's not a plague. Um, it is, you know, a night sister sort of conjuring. Um, but I think it's just a fantastic thing that we've now got toys like this. Oh, fantastic. So this Stormtrooper also does not have a head sculpted underneath. I was not expecting it, but just to just now that I can actually see, it's just the peg underneath. I love the gold on this face. It's just something absolutely fantastic. This one is the cleanest of the helmets. You can see on the back, we don't have anything. Got a little bit of gold here on the back of the back plate. A little bit of gold. Don't think we've even got, there's no gray, additional gray. We've got the standard Stormtrooper gray detailing and then some gold here. And then of course we've got the gold cracks on the different elements. Just fantastic. I love the gold painting on these figures. For the most part, the red follows the sculpting for the wrappings fairly well. We've got some tiny, tiny areas here where you can see that we've got just the white edge of where the sculpting is for the wrappings that isn't completely covered with red, just on this particular shoulder piece. On the other ones, we've got a much closer alignment of red paint over the sculpting. And I really do like the sculpting on those wrappings. Really nice. Oh, fantastic. So doing a quick little look of these figures, if I can get this one to stand up straight because they are a little bit wobbly, we can see that we've got a few pieces that are reused between these ones, just for a very quick. The chest piece here with that angled down strap is the same on this one. Standard chest here. This arm, the, the shoulder bell of the left, is the same as this one. 
These two have plain, just painted details. This one has wrappings on his right. The forearm of this one and this one are the same. The forearm of this one and this one are the same. This one has a red strap on the thigh, lots of straps on the right thigh, no straps on either thigh. The calf here, straps, straps are the same. And then this right calf and this right calf are the same. And then plain on these ones. So we can kind of see the number of permutations, and I'm sure somebody's done the math, of the number of different unique parts and how many different stormtroopers we could get if we bought a number of boxes and sort of mix and matched all the pieces. So for the sake of going through the details, we know what the articulation is going to be like. The sculpting on the shoulders is going to impact the articulation just a little bit because it is raised just a tiny bit. So we won't get quite the same lift as we can on the ones that don't have it. You can see on most of them, I think, yes, on all three, we've got a painted stripe. And I don't, I think that's just painted, maybe? This one looks painted, these two look sculpted in terms of that sash running across the top of the uh, shoulder strap there. Just a little bit of a difference there. But this one had just gold paint on the helmet. I've got so many figures to hold. These two have grey with gold. That's absolutely fantastic. It's a very flat grey, which really makes the shiny gold stand out. So this one, we've just got grey sort of along the jawline and gold on the top of the helmet. Again, nothing on the back. They do look a little bit more clean on the back. I like the wrappings on this one's legs, though. Absolutely held together. <laughs> There's a lot there really really fun some gray pieces down here the gray on the uh body pieces is shiny it has a gloss the gray on the helmet is a much more of a matte or satin finish definitely different very contrasting to the gold i pop that one down there <laughs> so many troopers here the matte finish of that gray just looks absolutely amazing with that gold line work over the top absolutely fantastic I think this one is my favorite helmet out of the three army building uh, night trooper figures. This one is just really, really cool. Just such a stark difference to a standard stormtrooper helmet. Of course, we've still got the black lenses and the black brow trim. We can see the gold line work goes over that brow trim there in the front. We've still got the black details here. Again, no tube stripes. And of course, the gray covers the gray details that we would have there in the back. It is just a little bit wobbly here, but then I think if it was dead straight, it would kind of look perhaps a little bit odd. I like the kind of the, you know, this isn't a pristine a stormtrooper, it's held together. I really like the gold line work, honestly. It's just such a standout detail, and we can see it there on the ab plate there as well. Just fantastic. Looks amazing. And I just, I like the raised wrappings, you know? Ah, oh, just so cool. Seeing the line art is just so different to actually seeing these figures in person. I absolutely love the detail. They look just so cool. And the coloring on all of these looks to be pretty uniform in terms of the grays. We can see the actual white of the Stormtrooper armor and the red. I think it would bother me a little bit if there was a little bit of inconsistency in the colors used across these three. Um, let's see if I can find some dark gray. This one doesn't have any dark gray on the body. This one also doesn't have any dark gray on the body. This is the only trooper that has dark gray on the body, which is this component here. And we've got a little bit down here as well. So I think this is the only one that has that glossy gray. We've got some gray on Enoch on his thigh here and on his uh, shoulders, uh, his forearms here for arms. <laughs> um, so yeah, I can see that the gray on Enoch is a little bit shinier. This one in particular looks like a sort of a digital print, and this one is that softer matte finish gray, which is kind of interesting. That one, just this helmet, is the one that's kind of got that matte finish, the gray used on Enoch in the other areas, like on his arms there, is the same kind of finish as this one here. So really fun. Okay, let's get them all aligned up.
to get all the figures lined up of course we need them holding their blasters I got Captain Enoch holding his blaster but I just want to see if it's actually hard uh, to get him to hold it from the other hand because I get the feeling it's just kind of gonna go there that's nice okay you can see he's kind of holding on the underside there I thought this part extending might make that a little bit difficult definitely looks pretty cool holding that in a two-handed position so let's take a quick little look at the E11s that came with the other night troopers they are all the same they are a dark gray and we can really see that when we compare it to the E11 that came with the most recent a new hope stormtrooper you can see this one is very gray compared to that black one if I can get the camera to look at them there is a difference between these two accessories this one we can see it is flat here this one that came with the stormtrooper has that kind of additional detail here the little flashlight detail that is on the outside edge there down at the end is not present on these ones and it is a different color plastic as well so dark gray this one definitely looks black so I'm hoping because we're pretty much going with standard stormtrooper hands here that extended trigger finger there is going to fit into the trigger guard of the E11 by now Hasbro should know how to make stormtroopers hold E11 blasters so I'm expecting that one to go in nice and easily and of course playing around with a little bit of posing we can get that two-handed grip like that very nice cool okay nice now we've got our fully armored stormtroopers oh these look so amazing oh I kind of want to buy more it's kind of a shame if this one was on a backing card then every time you buy a box you are just buying army builder characters it doesn't really make sense in my mind to have an army builder pack that includes a unique character because if I want to buy more I'm just going to end up with multiples of Captain Enoch and his pieces are not mix and match I can't put this helmet on other places I'm not going to use this part I, I suppose I could use his lower legs but as you will obviously see his undersuit is this red color uh, we can see it here at the joints and in the back which is completely different to the black of the standard night troopers so you're going to be doing a lot of painting he also has and I forgot to mention this before a completely unique back piece so you cannot use that if you want to make night troopers there as well I didn't see that one's ab wrappings actually go all the way around to the back so much detail here it's hard to actually absorb it all this one's got a plain sort of back here at the back we can see those same standard stormtrooper backs i got so many figures to hold and this one has that same ab back where the wrappings kind of go around but not quite all the way around and this one's even got gold on his butt plate there in the back as well oh just fantastic absolutely love it no major paint floors but then again I almost don't know if I would even notice it because there's just such striking detail with all of these red wrappings and that gold I know I keep talking about it but it just looks amazing I love the metallic finish on it so yeah wow okay four amazing figures this is just it's so exciting when you've been waiting for something I had this one pre-ordered as soon as it was revealed I've been anxiously waiting for it to arrive then when it ships I've got to wait for it to arrive internationally here in New Zealand and of course finally getting them in hand I opened this one up as soon as it arrived this morning in the mail just fantastic okay let's pose them all with their blasters so there we go that is Captain Enoch and three night troopers from the vintage collection army builder four pack that just arrived here for me in New Zealand this morning I had so much fun unboxing these figures honestly they look absolutely fantastic I wish that there were more more of the night troopers in this pack or you know maybe there was another box with some subtle different things I am still just excited and really happy that Hasbro gave us three different night troopers I honestly thought when I saw them on screen in the Ahsoka series that we would eventually get Captain Enoch and maybe one night trooper in the vintage collection line but we have three unique ones and if you're adventurous you can buy another box and create a little bit of a different variance like we saw saw on that front artwork we can sort of mix and match with the various pieces that we have here to create a few others I still 
I keep saying it, I want him on a backing card. Maybe we will get him re-released at some point. Again, who knows? I will probably still buy him on a backing card if they did that. I would probably keep him carded because I love this figure that much. I think it is just absolutely fantastic. Gold is just something we don't see quite as often in Star Wars action figures. You know, I just, it's just really striking. I love the design of the Night Troopers so well. And I just absolutely love the way they look in the 3.75 inch line. I'm definitely going to have to track down as many of the Black Series versions as I can. Sadly, those are also not available here in New Zealand. Ah... It's hard being a collector internationally sometimes but it's really exciting getting things like this in the mail after waiting so long for them to arrive absolutely fantastic so so very happy to have these ones and they just they look better than I was expecting which is always really fun when you finally get something that you're so excited for and it just blows you away and it's just fun collecting it should be fun and I really had a lot of fun opening these up I love the detail I'm gonna have so much fun at trying to get just the perfect zombie pose I've got them a little bit straight here here. I don't have them on bases yet so trying to get those zombie poses does put them a little bit off balance once I put them on clear action figure stands then I can really get some sort of shambling zombie poses there which is going to be really fun adding to my collection later on oh this was a great day to be a Star Wars collector this was a lot of fun so thank you so much for hanging out with me today as I opened up a whole box of awesome Star Wars action figures and had just absolutely tons of fun I hope you have a wonderful morning afternoon or evening wherever you are in the galaxy and let's hang out again very soon for more awesome Star Wars fun may the force be with you if you're a TVC fan, I recently opened up the 2024 reissued A New Hope Stormtrooper figure. That video is linked here in case you haven't already seen it, as well as a whole vintage collection playlist. This is the way.